All right, this is going to be Chapter 16, The Digestive System, Part 3. And in this section, we're going to talk about the large intestine, uh, the cecum, the cecum uh, appendicitis, the colon, the rectum, hemorrhoids, uh, functions of the large intestine, colon and rectum, can colon and rectum cancers, diverticulosis, diarrhea and constipation, and then diverticulitis. Uh, large intestine begins at the end of the ileum, which is the uh, the end of the small intestine, and ends at the anus. Primary functions, it reabsorbs water and it causes compaction of the intestinal contents into feces, absorption of vitamins freed by bacterial action, and then storage of fecal material prior to defecation. We have approximately five feet and it's in three sections, the cecum, the colon, and the rectum. The cecum. Material that arrives from the ileum first enters the expanded pouch, uh, which is the cecum. The ileocecal valve guards the connection between the ileum, the small intestine, and the cecum, the first part of the large intestine. Appendix or veriform attaches to the cecum on its posterior medial surface. And this is where we would get an appendicitis from. Uh, the veriform or the appendix inflames up in that area and gets infected and needs to be surgically removed if that's the case. <clears throat> Appendicitis, clinical note, inflammation of the appendix. Uh, symptoms is going to be right lower quadrant pain, high white blood count, uh, immune system response, a positive ultrasound or positive CT for inflammation in that area. Treatment is going to be surgical removal. And we have a place called McBurney's Point. This will be good to remember during assessment. It's one and a half to two inches above the right anterior or the front of the iliac crest along an imaginary line drawn between there and the actual umbilicus. And this would be McBurney's Point right here. This is your... This is your iliac crest, and then this would be your umbilicus. So an imaginary line drawn between those two, and about one and a half to two inches. McBurney's point. This is where we would palpate, or they would have appendicitis from. So uh, rebound tenderness at McBurney's point would, might be a possible documentation. Uh, the colon. Large diameter and thinner walls in the small intestine. Uh, most striking feature is pouches or the hostra. It permits distension and elongation so that we can store uh, fecal material in there if we need to. And this is about the body's last chance to adjust water in the fecal matter. So um, a lot of water will move in and out of the large intestine. Uh, the rectum forms the end of the digestive tract and the anus is the exil exit on the anal canal. Uh, internal and external sphincters, uh, smooth muscle, and this is not under voluntary control. So the ileum, ileocecal valve, the veriform or appendix. Uh, we have the ascending colon, the transverse, the descending, and the sigmoid, and then the rectum. Clinical note, hemorrhoids. A swelling of internal and external veins are called hemorrhoids, and we actually can get an external thrombosis from, from hemorrhoids as well. Most common cause of hemorrhoids is going to be straining or lifting something that's too heavy. Uh, functions of the large intestine. They absorb water, uh, reabsorb bile salts. Uh, bacteria that reside in the colon generate vitamins, and the two vitamins that we generate off of this are going to be vitamin K, water-soluble vitamin, important in glucose metabolism, and then vitamin B6, required in the manufacture of steroid hormones and neurotransmitters, and those are both going to be essential vitamins. Organic waste, uh, breakdown of hem, and the release of bilirubin in the bile, and we get toxins that will also be expelled as well. Uh, toxins would be ammonia and nitrogen-containing compounds. We can also get hydrogen sulfide. Uh, we can actually generate some hydrogen sulfide gas, and this will give a rotten egg smell uh, to the fecal material. Uh, 
clinical note, colon and rectum cancers, 56,000 die each year of this, and the key is going to be early detection. The earlier that you detect this, there are a lot of lymphatic structures in the area, and very simply, if it mastitizes, it will spread to other organs, uh, and these are the kind of cancers in this area that, that can uh, spread to other organ systems very, very easily. Uh, clinical note, diverticulosis, uh, outpatchings of the wall of the colon uh, can become infected, and then we get diverticulitis, and then we can actually also from this get bleeding diverticulosis, and these would be the little outpatchings. Um, if, very simply, if we get fecal material that sticks into here uh, and starts to build up, it could inflame this area and cause pain. Uh, clinical note, diarrhea and constipation. Diarrhea. Uh, most normal causes of diarrhea is going to be things like a protozoa that we've ingested, bacteria, a viral diarrhea. Uh, the big thing on diarrhea is going to be the loss of fluid uh, and maintaining fluid uh, during this episode. Uh, constipation. Slowing of intestines until more water is, is absorbed. And the treatment on this and how we get ahead of this is going to be increase the amount of fiber so that the peristaltic movement has something to grab onto. <clears throat> Essentially increase water and some colase, which will soften the stool. Digestion and absorption. The process of absorption of nutrients, uh, lactose intolerant, water and electrolyte absorption. Um, the absorption of vitamins. A clinical note over emergency vitamins. And a clinical note or over malabsorption syndrome. Digestion and absorption. Uh, typical meal contents, a mixture of carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids, and waters, electrolytes, and vitamins. Um, have to be broken down before the absorption can occur, so that's what the whole digestive process kind of does, is it breaks it down so absorption can actually occur. Process of absorption of nutrients occurs in various spots. In carbohydrates, it occurs in the mouth. Uh, it completes this in the duodenum and is essentially broken down by pancreatic amylase. We start by introducing salivary amylase whenever we're chewing the foods up. Lipids, bile salts from the uh, gallbladder, uh, droplets and lipase breaks down triglycerides. Uh, proteins, pepsinogen from the stomach turns into pepsin, and or they're completely down, they're broken down in the microvilli of the small intestine. Uh, clinical note over lactose intolerance. Uh, Asia and Africa descent uh, de develop lactase deficiencies, um, and there's not a lot of high milk product over over in those countries, and they are not exactly tolerant of lactose, which that's that's one of the ways that we would metabolize uh, dairy products essentially. And an example of this: there's no cheese in Chinese food. Um, not a lot of gigantic uh, milk substances or dairy products actually in uh, Asian food. Uh, water and electrolyte absorption. Water soluble concentrations absorb essentially through osmosis and they are from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. <clears throat> uh, and then water pretty much uh, is absorbed in the large intestine. That's the last opportunity the body actually has. The absorption of vitamins. We have fat-soluble vitamins, and it'll be important to know the difference between these two. A, D, E, and K are, are fat-soluble vitamins, and uh, these are resolved um, or actually dissolved by uh, lipid digestion um, in the actual uh, after the small intestine. Water-soluble vitamins, vitamins B and vitamin C. Uh, B must be bound to intrinsic factor, which is secreted by the actual stomach. And again, this is going over where it's actually starting to broke broken down. Oral cavity, salivary amylase is where it starts <coughs> in the actual mouth. <coughs> uh, intestinal mucosa, lactase, maltase, sucrase. We're going to break down monosaccharides and get it to the bloodstream. Lipids bile salts from the gallbladder, proteins, pepsin, pepsinogen, and breaking down of proteins from the stomach. Clinical note, emergency vitamins. Uh, B1 or thiamine 
Uh, it's essentially required for the first steps in the Krebs cycle. A uh, deficiency in this can be seen in chronic alcoholics. Uh, and it, the, the vitamin is generally utilized in altered mental status. That's what this stands for, protocols. So anybody that has a history of alcoholism and you're administering sugar to, you really should utilize or give them thiamine uh, as well. Uh, vitamin K is necessary for blood coagulation. Deficiencies can occur in the liver and liver disease. Uh, this will give the patient actually bleeding problems if they have um, a dysfunctional liver. Clinical note malabsorption syndromes uh, result from damage of the accessory glands and the interstitial mucosa. And some areas of this is going to be things like ischemic bowel to where we can decrease blood supply from whatever the cause to sections of bowel. And then uh, radiation exposure, which is not too prominent. Uh, but uh, during certain events, you can get radiation exposure to your intestinal area, which will give you a definite gastrointestinal phase of the sickness. <clears throat> Aging and the digestive system. Uh, epithelial stem cells decline. Smooth muscle tone decreases. Cumulative damage becomes apparent. Uh, teeth and cavities are, are an example of this. Um, dentures with, a, with the modern implementations of uh, dentistry. <clears throat> Cancer rates increase. Uh, direct or indirect effects from some other system uh, whenever you're aging. Uh, integration with other systems. We're going to talk about abdominal pain here just a little bit. And as far as the integration with other systems, the digestive tract supplies the nutrients for so that all the other systems will have a storehouse, if you will, or building blocks to, to build on. So it's going to interact with most of our systems. Please look over this area um, so that you uh, can take a look at. There, there should be a few test questions over the integration with other systems. Uh, clinical notes, abdominal pain. They're mostly hollow organs, uh, stomach, gallbladder, small intestine, large intestine, um, can cause poorly localized pain. You can't just point to it with one, low, with one finger, so to speak. <clears throat> it gives us something called referred pain. So in these organs, we can have pain up into our shoulders, into our back, uh, from our xiphoid process down to our pelvis, until proven otherwise we need to try to get as much information as we can and do as many diagnostic tests as we can to determine what might be the problem. Uh, rule out cardiac causes, under altered mentation with the presence of ascites, possibly rule out encephalopathy, uh, things like that. So we can get referred pain is the point on this slide. Uh, terms we should know. Uh, these are going to be areas, please look over them in the book. There's going to probably again be test questions over these. Uh, bile, chyme, <clears throat> defecation reflux, digestion, duodenum, esophagus, gallbladder, gastric glands, lacteal, liver, mesentery, mucosa, pancreas, pancreatic juice, peristalsis, stomach, teeth, villi, and villa. And this ends section three. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. My name is Roy Smith, 405-219-7613 or smithr at imsa.net. Thank you.